Welcome back to part three of our series where we are doing our advanced analysis, if that's what you want to call it. And we are working with list objects, pivot tables, pivot caches, the power pivot model, DAX formulas, measures, all sorts of different stuff. We're working with all of those different objects inside of Excel VBA. So this is definitely intended for that audience who wants a very advanced topic, exploring a lot of different objects in conjunction with each other and really starting to see all of those connections work together. I love this series only because it's just pulling together so many different topics that we've been covering. So in our previous video, we created our workbook connections. We also created our pivot table. We created our relationship in our model. We've created a single measure so far. And now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking this newly created pivot table and we're gonna start adding some fields to it. And we're gonna see that the fields, even though they behave very similar to pivot fields, we call them differently when they belong to the power pivot model. And that is called cube fields, cube fields. So very important that you understand that and that they're not pivot fields, they are cube fields. So that's what we have planned for this video. On a side note, um, I don't know if anyone, so I'm on the beta version of Excel. Um, they have this new Microsoft Flow component that is being added to it. So I'm very, very, very curious to see how this will be integrated into Excel. Uh, I'm not sure what is there yet. It seems like you still need a like business account to use it, but I would be curious to see if they allow it in the personal market one. So very interesting as a side note. All right, so where to next? Well, we just created our measure. What are we gonna do next? Well, let's grab a cube field. Let's grab the pivot table model cube field, the collection. Grab the pivot table cube fields. These are all the different fields that we have. So we're gonna say Excel cube fields equals Excel pivot table model. And then we're gonna do that cube field. Okay, so what can we do from here? Well, I think what probably makes most sense at this point is I'm gonna actually run the code as is. And I'm gonna show you that pivot table. So right now we have a pivot table. Whenever we use the, uh, what is it? Whenever we use power pivot, you'll notice that we can see the multiple tables in our model. And so each one of these, each of these fields is considered a cube field. So we have to keep in mind that even though they might be in different tables, we can see each of these fields from the power pivot model. And so when we need to select these different fields, we have to do it a little bit differently than compared to previous tables. Now, sorry, previous pivot tables. Previous pivot tables, you had a sales field. There's nothing stopping you from technically having two different sales fields. Now, in this example, I could name this product and I could name this product as well too, but they both exist in two different tables. So in order to select this specific product, field, I have to select this table, then that product field. It'll make a little bit more sense when you see it in action, but I just wanted to throw that out there really quickly because it does give us a little bit more insight into how we actually work with these fields from the VBA perspective. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to add the fields to the pivot table. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say with Excel cube field, so with all the fields, and I'm then gonna select them. The first one that I want to do belongs in the F sales table. So I'm gonna specify the table first, and then I need to specify the column that I wanna select. In this case, I wanna grab that region column. So now I'm working with this field. And then from here, it's just like the old fields. So we're gonna say the orientation equals Excel row field. And then the position is going to be the first one. So I'm going to run this. Oh, did I not spell it correctly? Did I misspell it? Oh, maybe I did. I'll check in a second. Oh, 
Um, let's do this. I know what I need to do. I need to do uh, set the Excel pivot table model equal to Excel book, the pivot tables, and then sales analysis. I know what I did wrong. I didn't specify the pivot table I'm working with. It's kind of the problem when I don't do it exactly the way I need it to. Sorry about that. It looks like there was an issue. So when I was selecting that, I was doing at the workbook level, you need to do it at the sheet level. So when you're selecting the pivot table, it's at the sheet level, not the workbook level. Of course, it confused the living heck out of me, but I figured it out and I was able to add the specific field to our pivot table. So you can see here, look at this. We now have our region inside of our pivot table. So we're gonna continue on with this and we're going to add a different one from a different table. So in this situation, I'm gonna do D products. And in this situation, I want the product name column. And instead of being position one, this is going to be position two. And let's see what this looks like. So now we should have two fields on our table and that looks good. So that looks like everything is working as expected, thankfully. Then from here, um, I'm going to add um, a sum of price measures. So I'm gonna actually grab a, a new measure. And so this is a little bit different. This is just more for demonstration purposes. I'm not gonna say it necessarily means a lot at this point, but I'm going to sum the prices. And so in this situation, say set Excel cube field equal to Excel pivot table model. And then I'm gonna do cube fields, get measure. And then from here, I need the attribute hierarchy equal to, and then this, I need to specify the location of the field. So the products dot, dot, and then it's two square brackets, the price. So that's the field we're gonna be aggregating. And then I need the function. So what is the consolidation function we're gonna be using? In this situation, we're gonna be doing Excel uh, sum. And then from here, I need a caption. What should it read on that pivot, uh, pivot field dialog box or task pane? In this case, I'm gonna say call it sum of unit prices. Okay, so that's our cube field. We're going to add the sum of prices, sum of unit prices measure to the pivot table. And so here I'm going to say Excel pivot table model, add data field. The field we are gonna be specifying is the one that we just defined up above. So this one right here. Then from here, we're going to add the total sales measures. So this is the one that we defined up above here. Now, how do we do that? That's not too bad either. We're gonna say Excel pivot table model, add data field. The field is going to be Excel pivot table model, cube fields, and then the this situation, I want the measures cube, and then I'm gonna do the total sales. So notice how this lives in almost its separate cube. This is in the measures cube. This is in the D products cube. This is in the F sales cube, but we're just specifying each field that we want from that cube. So very similar, but you can see I'm doing the same exact thing here. I'm just not defining it beforehand. I'm actually defining it in the line, or I could do it up here and specify it beforehand. Different ways, some are more clear than others, but each one should give you the same result. So we're going to change the color style of the pivot table. We're going to say Excel pivot table model, and then I'm gonna do cells, uh, Oh, sorry, uh, Excel pivot table model, table style two, and then it's pivot style light 14. And then I'm going to 
change the row height. Excel pivot sheet, cells, row height equals 18. Okay, so let's see what this does. Hopefully it uh, works out smoothly. Bam. So it looks like everything was added for us. So now we have the different measures in here. We have our sum of unit price. I'm gonna open up this again and we will see the field list. Uh, this pops up, this is only popping up because I put that sum of price in here. So it's kind of freaking out a little bit. It's going like, what are you doing? What's going on? So don't worry about that just yet. Um, but the nice thing is we can see all the different things that have been selected and everything seems to be organized. Our color has changed as well. And if you wanted to explore it too, you could go into Power Pivot and you could actually see the Power Pivot model as well. So you can see here, here is our metric that we've defined. And you notice that we have now have that in there as well. And then you can see the different things that we want. We can select that as well. So a lot of good stuff in here that we can easily see as needed. Very, very helpful. I do like that I can at least keep it and close it open if we want. However, that is the end of our series. So if you have any questions about how to add measures, how to take cube fields and add them to a pivot table, feel free to put them down in the comments below. Otherwise, in our next series, I think, what are we doing in our next series? I think we were going to work with hyperlinks when it came to VBA. So it's, that's basically what we have coming up next. I think it's going to be that. And then we actually might start working with shapes inside of Excel VBA. It's very similar to every other thing out there, but it's there as well. So we'll probably look at that. And then I am considering, I'm not for sure doing it yet. I'm considering you doing a OneNote series and then possibly a Microsoft. Um, I'm trying to look and see if they have other ones. So like Visio um, and even Microsoft projects. I might consider to start doing a series on that as well too. So keep an eye out. But yeah, we will see you in the next video.